G'day again. So today we're going to look at completing the square. For this, all you want to do, if we do it by example, it's probably the easiest, if we go x squared plus, oh, let's say, 4x, and we just leave it at that, and we say, how do you complete the square? It's pretty simple. Whatever that number is, and you've got to make sure you take account of whatever this sign is. So this number is plus 4. So what we do is we halve it. We're going to halve it. Half plus 4 is plus 2. And then we square it. What is 2 times 2? 4. Or plus 4. It's always going to be a positive number, isn't it? It doesn't matter whether this is positive or negative. This is always going to be positive. So when you complete this square, the answer will be putting the 4 there. So to complete that square, I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now this 2 is pretty valuable. If you factorise this, you're going to end up with x plus 2, x plus 2. So you can just look at this and say, well, if I want to express it in brackets, what I can do is I can just say that's x plus 2 squared. And I've got the square there and there. So they are both the same. If you just try to factorise that, well, you would either have 4 times 1 or 2 times 2, and you'll end up with 2 times 2 because 2 plus 2 is 4. So if we just look at the factorisation of that, we get, what do we get? Well, we want an x, and we want an x, and now we want two numbers there and there that multiply to give 4. And we know it's going to be 2, so let's put them in. What is 2 times x? Well, that's 2x. What is 2 times x? Well, that's 2x. 2x plus 2x is 4x. So this is a square. It's the same thing there and there. And that can be expressed as x plus 2 squared. Okay? Now that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. And they're the two ways you usually express a perfect square. This is how we make a perfect square. Let's do another one. We'll be back in a sec. G'day again. Back for some more of Complete the Square. So here we've started off with x squared plus 6x. We want something to go there. So what's our method? Our method is halve it. So we're going to find half multiplied by 6. Well, that's 3. And then we're going to square it. So square it. And that's going to equal 9. So that 9 is going to go there. So we will have x squared plus 6x plus 9. And the other way to express it is by using that 3 and say, well, this now equals x plus 3 squared. Let's do another one. So what's our method? We want to complete the square. We're going to halve it. So we're going to go half of minus 10. What's half of minus 10? Minus 5. So we have minus 5. And then we're going to square it. Minus 5 times minus 5. A minus times a minus is a plus. So we're going to get 25. And again, you always get this number will always be positive because it's a square. So that's number, it's going to go there. So that will be x squared minus 10x plus 25. And the other way to express it, there's that number there, that's the one we're going to use. The same as this, this is a plus 3, I should have written a plus there, shouldn't I? We're going to use that number, ends up there. So this number is going to end up down here. So we'll have x minus 5 all squared. And again, if you factorise that, you'll end up with x minus 5, x minus 5. If you factorise that, you'll end up with x plus 3, x plus 3. And you're done. G'day again. So back for part three. So this time we're going to solve two questions using this method of completing the square. So let's have a go. Here we go. x squared plus 6x minus 4 equals 0. We've just done both of these. So it should be in your head. Halve this and we get, so we're going to halve it, and we get 3. And square it, and we get 9. So we want that number right there. 
I want to put nine there. I don't want that four there. Now there's two ways to do it. Either I can say I'm just going to change it and then whatever I've done to this side I'll do to that side. So we'll do it this way for that one and then we'll, do, we'll switch this to show you a second method. So we want that nine to be right there. So let's just write it there. X squared plus six X and we want that to be plus nine. Now what did I just do? I just changed minus four into plus nine. You can't actually do that without doing something to the other side of the equation. So what I've actually changed here is I've changed by adding, I haven't added nine, have I? I've added 13. So I've added 13 here, so I must add 13 to the other side. So I've really said I want to add 13 there, I want to add 13 there. So this side must say 13. Now we can just present this as a square. So x plus, what number goes here? You should know that by now. It's three, isn't it? It's that number that you have. x plus three squared equals 13. We want to find the answer because we're solving. We want x equals. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to get x plus three equals plus or minus the square root of 13. Why is it plus or minus? Well, anything you take a square root of has a plus or minus. For example, if I take the square root of 4, how can I get 4? I can say 2 times 2, or I can say minus 2 times minus 2. So the answer to that is always plus 2 or minus 2. So anytime you take a square root, it's plus or minus. Keep that in mind. Okay, keep going. We've almost got our answer here. We've got x plus 3 equals plus or minus root 13. We want this on the other side, so we're going to subtract 3. So x equals minus 3 plus or minus root 13. You can punch that in on your calculator to give you the two answers. So your first answer would be, oh, doesn't matter which order you do it in, x minus 3, let's say plus, we'll do that first, so minus 3 plus root 13, or minus 3 minus root 13. And you can punch that on your calculator to give you, you know, a decimal answer. If they say the word exact, they say I want an exact answer, leave it like that. If they say to a couple of decimal points, press the buttons on your calculator. Let's do another one. So we want to complete the square on this. What do we do? Halve it. So halve it. Then we get half of minus 10 is minus 5 and square it. So square it. And you should know this because we just did that in the previous shot. So it's 25. So I want to put 25 right there where that 3 is. In this, in this uh, example, what I did was I just put the 9 there and I said, I'm going to figure out what did I do to both sides. So in this example, I'm going to do something different. So you might like to do it this way, or you might like to do it the second way. So instead of doing that first, I'm going to get rid of the 3 first. So I'm going to say, well, this equals x squared minus 10x equals minus 3. And now I've got nothing there, so I'm only adding this square to both sides. It's the same thing. You do the same thing. It's just you do it in different steps. So halve it. And we know we're going to get minus 5. And square it. And we know we're going to get 25. So I want to put the 25 there. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. Okay, so from here, I'm going to say plus 25, plus 25. And so I'll get x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 22. 25 minus 3, 22. Now I'm going to put this into abbreviated form, so into this bracketed form. So x plus what number's going to go there? You should be able to tell me. X plus, it's minus, isn't it? Well done. That's X minus 5 squared equals 22. So now I take square roots of both sides, just like I did here. Take the square root. If we take the square root, we're going to get plus or minus. So X minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 22. Here I subtracted 3 from both sides to get my two answers, so I'm going to subtract 5. No, I'm going to add 5, aren't I? So x equals 5 plus or minus 
is it 22? And that will give you your two answers, 5 plus root 22 on your calculator, or 5 minus root, two, root 22. So that's an exact answer, and that would be full marks for an exact answer, or press it on your calculator and give it to a few decimal places. And you're done. Go okay, again, just thought we'd do one more example. Complete the square to solve this. Let's do it again. So we look at this number, this number is plus 12. We are going to halve it. What's half of plus 12? Plus six. Then I'm going to square it. You might want to keep going and pause the video and then see if you get the answer that I get. Square it, what's six times six? Well, 36, and we want that number to go there. So I want to put 36 there. So x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals. So what have I got to do? Well, I've, I've got to move 9 to that side and I've got to add 36 to both sides. So I've really got to add 45 to both sides, haven't I? So I could do it in two steps. You could say, well, I want to move the 9 there. Well, that's 9 and I want to go plus 36, All right? So I'm still adding 45 to both sides to get this square. Let's put it in brackets, x plus, what number goes there? This number right here, plus 6. Squared equals 9 plus 36 is 45. And we'll simplify it as we did before. So take the square root of both sides. x plus 6 equals, when you do the square root, you do plus or minus. And then all I've got to do is move that 6 across there. So subtract 6 from both sides. So x equals, and we'll, this time we'll spread it out so you can see it. So I'll go minus 6 plus root 45, or minus 6 minus root 45. And you're done.